We are all here today because there are issues in our communities that affect us as young people. I want to start off by telling you why today matters to me so much as a youth in Kentucky. I was born in Berea, Kentucky in 1998, a town rich in history and tradition. My upbringing was, however, far from traditional. My father left my family before I was even born. My mother passed away before my second birthday. My brother and I were small and alone in a very big world. We could have easily ended up in the care of strangers, or perhaps in the care of no one at all. It was the kindness of two old ladies, my grandmother and my great-grandmother, that saved us. These two world-worn women had the courage to look down at our terrified young faces, grasp firmly to our hands, and accept us as their own. It had been nearly a lifetime since they had children of their own, but then they decided to do it one more time. I remember the pain on my grandmother's face the first time I asked her if she was my real mother. The first thing she said was, a long time ago, I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, and one day she grew up, and she had you. But I was persistent, and I asked again, are you my mother? I remember that she pulled me into her arms, and she pushed the hair away from my face, and she said, yes, I will always be your mother. These words meant so much to me then, and they still mean a great deal to me today. In that moment, I felt safe. I felt secure. My world was rocked to its core when my grandmother passed away. I was in the eighth grade. My great-grandmother, at 92 years old, chose my brother and I once again. She chose to once again become a caretaker, while many of her friends and her peers were being taken care of. My great-grandmother, Ruby Farrell, turns 95 years old on April 10th, 2016. While our relationship has shifted some in her growing need for assistance, she still continues to be a provider for me. Whenever times get hard and the grief of loss sets in, she draws me to her lap and cradles me still. When our bills go up, we sit together at the kitchen table and we talk about things that we can afford to give up. I do the laundry, but she still insists on folding it for me. Sometimes I wonder, what my life will be like when she passes away. I wonder if I can handle losing someone else, someone who is so strong. There are 53,000 other youth in Kentucky who are dealing with the same conflicting emotions as I am, who are being raised by family members other than by their biological parents. They're sometimes referred to as the hidden homeless, and over half of the students in the Gear Up service area of Eastern and Southern Kentucky are living with extended family or even their friends. And Kentucky ra ranks as one of the highest nationally in this crisis. It's a difficult road, one many, like my family, walk willingly with love. And the support we've had from organizations like Grandparents as Parents, our school, our community, have been amazing, but there are unfortunately a lot of young people like me who have not been so lucky. Many children in Kentucky don't have supportive families to hold them up till they are old enough to stand on their own. Even more painful, is, painful to me personally is the fact that the majority of those living with their grandparents or their aunts or their uncles are living in poverty. Economic and emotional support is vital to families like mine when stability and security is so often lacking, or even non-existent. Through my work with the Berea College Group called PALS, or Promise Appalachian Leaders in Service, 
I've had the opportunity to share my story along with 40 other future building youth. I've been given a voice when 53,000 people have been so voiceless. I've realized that along with everyone in this room, I am responsible for making the world one where I and the future dreamers, doers, and creators want to live. Every young person in this room has the ability to speak up about things that matter to them, especially things that impact their communities. I propose we start by acknowledging our communities. After all, Wendell Berry once wrote, I am what I stand on. We need to recognize that we are Kentuckians. We start by being proud of our stories and what they say about who we have become or want to become. And then only then can we make a change in our communities. It's the most important thing that we can do as youth to impact what has impacted us regardless of what family is to us. And this is what Children's Advocacy Day at the Capitol is all about. It's to stand up for kids like me who need a champion, a voice, and support to succeed. So today, think about the children across Kentucky who need you to stand up for them. Your voice matters. It matters to young people like me. We are the voices of the future, and we are the leaders of tomorrow and today. We are Kentucky. Thank you.